Hey everybody, welcome to Will's Personal Development Show. And today I'm super excited to have Alex Fasulo on. And uh, it's actually really exciting because um, she is making a lot of money on Fiverr, 300K yeah. a year. And so I'm super excited to have you on. Uh, Alex, welcome to the show. Hi Will, thanks for having me. Yeah, so um, a little background about how I found you. And I'll do a little intro on who you are and then feel free to kind of introduce yourself. I found you through TikTok actually. So you are definitely putting in work there. You're putting out like, it seems like one post a day or even more. And you're putting out quality content there, growing very rapidly on there and giving tips on freelancing, making money and stuff like that. So I found you on there and then reached out. And uh, then I discovered your whole story through some research to prep for this interview basically you know graduated school didn't like your job in uh, uh, a certain uh, company so you quit quit that company and then slowly but surely found your way onto fiverr and throughout the years you've kind of built this presence and now it seems like you're expanding that to a personal brand so um, is there anything else you want to add to that story no you you summed that up pretty nicely <laughs> um I just have the classic, you know, hated my corporate job, quit it, and ended up discovering that I love freelancing, love working for myself, love being an entrepreneur, and I've worked super hard at it, and it's uh, now paying off um, in more ways than one, you know, monetarily, and then also being able to travel while I work, and yeah, I'm trying to pivot now a little bit into my personal brand, because I don't want to forever be tied to another company's platform, so TikTok has been a great uh, starting point for that. I've come into contact with a ton of people on there, and I'm not surprised you found me there. So I'm happy to know my videos are paying off. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I think most interviews of you kind of dive straight into how you make your money on Fiverr, and we'll get to that, but I'm actually really interested in the TikTok thing. So let's, let's touch on that first. Sure. So, um, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, that big entrepreneur, he's been pushing TikTok, telling everyone to get on there because there's very little uh, competition compared to, to the demand. So how, why did you start TikTok and um, what, what's your end goal there? Because now you're at like 30K followers and, and still growing pretty rapidly. Yeah, I'm actually almost a 38K. That's how quick it grows, which is insane. Um, it's funny you mentioned Gary V because he was the first person I also saw push it. And I ascribe to all of his teachings and everything. So um, hearing him promote it in the fall, it definitely made me start thinking about it. But it actually wasn't until uh, in January, I went to Miami for my birthday and I ended up at a dinner with my friends. And this one guy who is famous on TikTok, he's got like 1.3 million followers, um, Eric Howell, his name is. And I had dinner with him and some of his friends. And he talked about TikTok the whole dinner. And I, it, I sound, it was hooked. I was hooked. So, um, that trip, I actually filmed a TikTok video. I have three accounts on there. I have the business one, I have a funny one that I kind of keep private. And I posted a video to it on the trip and it blew up to 100K views in two days. So I, I became addicted to it essentially because uh, the exposure you get on there, you just don't get on other social media platforms anymore. So once you get a taste for it, it's kind of hard to walk away. And then I, um, about a month later, launched my business one. Uh, I launched that, I'd say at the end of February. And so here I am at the beginning of May, and it's grown 37,000 followers since then, uh, which is insane. So my, you know, my goal is to hit 100K before 2021. I think I think I'll be able to do it, um, which is it's amazing. So I, I love it. I opened up before Instagram now. And just to give the listeners some uh, kind of comparison, uh, you posted a TikTok showing that it took you like what, like a year to get the same amount of followers on Instagram. Four years. Four years. <laughs> different, yeah, it's insane. So now is the time to get onto that platform. Um, it's definitely mm -hmm. growing. Um, bef before we jump into Fiverr, uh, do you have any like TikTok, TikTok tips? Because we're all trying to grow. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to grow on there too. Right? Yeah, that's a tongue twister there. Yeah. Um, yeah, what I've discovered on there is you have to stick with your niche. So, you know, if you want to brand yourself as, um, someone who's a genius with investing money, you really can't deviate from that. And I like to take photos too. So I tried to experiment with some of my photography on my business account went absolutely nowhere. So I would say, you know, pick a niche and really stick to it. And even if you think 
the information you're sharing is boring. It's honestly not. There's a girl on there who does like resume tips and has 300K followers because all the high schoolers want to know more about beefing up their resume. So even if you think it's boring, it's really not to some people. And um, so yeah, stick with your niche. Um, I actually post three videos a day, which is crazy. So post a lot, post more than once per day. Um, definitely answer everyone who writes to you, you know, the more comments, the better. And um, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, the trends, right? Yeah. I see you do a lot of trends. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Always go to the trending page. I do every day. Um, trends pop up quickly on there, and there are these little jingles, songs that are being promoted. And um, I find I have a lot of success when I hop on the beginning of a trend. So if it just started trending yesterday, I try and make and post that video today because it's hot. So uh, definitely check out the trending page every day. Use the trending music for sure. That's interesting. I also see that you're very... Uh, understanding of the platform, meaning like you understand it's not the same as an Instagram post or story. Right. Like you're posting those um, text captions like every two seconds because TikTokers yeah. love that. They do, yeah. Interesting. Okay, yeah. so let's dive into Fiverr. I know um, my listeners are salivating on this because a lot of them, uh, they haven't made any money online or they're just starting out. They have no capital to go off of. And so Fiverr seems like a great starting point. So can you tell your story behind Fiverr? And um, I'm sure it wasn't like overnight success. So it's not like you woke up the next day and you got 300K a year. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, and I try and be transparent about that on TikTok, too, because I don't want anyone to think it was instant success because it definitely wasn't. But um, I started out on it in 2015 just editing. I only had one gig open. I didn't take it very seriously. I was making like $50 a month from it and then when I quit my job in 20, at the end of 2015, almost 2016, I had a problem, you know, like I had to pay my rent and stuff. So I actually was like, you know what, I'm gonna check out the site, I've been on it, might as well see what it can do for me. And I opened up a few new gigs and I started to get a little activity. And um, I, I started like sharpen my sales skills, you know, and follow up with these people and say, hey, you know, I'd love it if you booked an order. And I discovered the buyer request feature on Fiverr where you can apply to post a jobs. And I started to kind of amass these five star reviews because it I understood that like Yelp, the more five star reviews you get, the kind of the higher ranked you're going to be in people's eyes, regardless of the quality of content you're posting. So I um, just grinded for two years, really focusing on getting five star reviews, making people happy, scaling the business. And I went from, you know, like 36 K the first year to 60 K the next year, I think then 60 K again. And then everything changed on Fiverr pro when they launched that in 2017. And, um, what that is, it's just the top 1% of the platform. So I was able to raise my rates tremendously as being part of it. And that was when I moved into the six figure realm. Um, which I've been in since 2018, and it's crazy. Uh, so this will be my third year making a lot of money on Fiverr. Um, I made, I guess people like to know these things in these podcasts. I try and be like humble, but uh, last year I made 350k. The year before I made 300k. We'll see what I make this year. Um, but it's all because of Fiverr Pro. And not to say that I wasn't making good money before Fiverr Pro. You know, people will say to me, oh, my gosh, you were making 60K. That's amazing. And I'm like, yeah, and I, anyone can. You know, you don't even need to have the top accolades on the site. But as you can see, it's a five-year journey I'm explaining here. It's definitely not something that happened in three nights. Got it. And so in terms of, like, fees and taxes, like, is that before those get applied? Like, I know Fiverr takes off, like, a dollar for every five, which is – you know, understandable since they're marketing you, but how's, how's that play out? Yeah. So actually those numbers I'm telling you were after Fiverr took out their 20%. So I made technically even more than that. Um, they take 20%. And at first, you know, I didn't know how I felt about it. And then I realized I have 50 people message me a day on there that I could never have gone out and gotten that for myself. So I don't mind anymore that they take that 20%. I understand that that's the deal. Um, so it doesn't bother me. I know there's other freelancing sites out there. The, the fee might not be as bad if you hate that idea, but, uh, yeah, taxes can be tough because you just claim it as personal income tax since you're running like your own business on Fiverr. So if you don't have a lot of things to write off, um, taxes can be rough and definitely one of the reasons I'm considering possibly moving out of New York state at some point, because I get hit hard here, um, when I could run the business anywhere. 
Yeah, I, I've definitely heard entrepreneurs do that. I know John Lee Dumas moved to Costa Rica. Neil Patel moved to Las Vegas for taxes. Yeah. But I mean, if you're making that much, I, um, I, I wouldn't mind paying a lot in taxes as well. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, up to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in terms of like um, tips on getting out there, first off, what can like the average listener expect to make on Fiverr within like six months of hard work? Um, you know, okay, so it's hard because it depends what they're offering. Uh, the like logo illustration department is so big on there that I would say they could start making more money, you know, more quickly than people who are in the less busy departments, which would be business development, business plans, that kind of thing. So if you're in a relatively you know, busy department, which is social media management, graphic design, writing, translation, that kind of thing. Um, I would say in the in the very beginning, expect to make something like 10k per year. I mean, it won't it will not be a ton of money right off the bat, but you almost don't want it to be because you're going to have to learn all these new things. You know, being responsive to people all day long, working on Sundays when you might not have previously worked on Sunday, and that kind of thing. So I actually. In retrospect, I'm happy it went somewhat slowly because I had to relearn. I had, I had to teach myself how to be my own boss, which you can't do in a night either. So, you know, you might not make that much in the beginning, but um, if you stick with it, it just goes, my curve is just gone, you know, up. Um, it's never gone down. So the longer you're on there, the more you're working, the more reviews you get, the more momentum there is behind you. And there's, I would say to people, you have nothing to lose to start right now. And if you have another job, that's awesome. Do both at the same time. Um, Cause that's what I did for a year. You know, there's no harm in checking it out while you work another job. So there's not as much stress to make it happen. Yeah. And so in terms of actually like making it to that higher level the next year, um, what tips do you have on that? I, I know, Reviews are probably really important, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, reviews are everything on there. You know, I, I'm at a position now where I have completed over 9,200 orders on there and I have close to like 5,000 reviews because not, they don't always have to leave a review. So I'm at a point now where I just, while I'm talking to you, people are booking me because if they really want, they could spend one month reading every single review of mine before they, you know, they'll feel like they can trust me or not trust me. So the absolute most important thing is getting as many five-star reviews as possible because that will just start to tell people while you're sleeping that they can book you and they won't even need to message you. And that's really how the business starts to scale. Um, I would say what I offer, I've told I've, people have like yelled at me on TikTok about this, but it worked for me is I offered unlimited revisions and people might say, oh, they're going to take advantage of you. Yeah, some people did, but, um, you know, Gary Vee would agree with me on this. Like, I put in my time, I did the extra work, and now it's obviously paying off. So um, if you tell a buyer, hey, I'll revise this as many times as you want, they're going to just, they're going to be happy with you, and they're going to leave you a five-star review. You're going to work hard. I mean, I, I still work hard. Um, that's definitely the name of the game if you want to work for yourself, but it is what it is, and I, I definitely put in my time. Um, and I always tell people like, you're going to have to put in some time too. Cause I don't want anyone to think <laughs> that I didn't put in time, you know? Yeah. And, um, in terms of like service lines that you can cover on Fiverr, um, by the way, her TikTok really covers a lot of these, uh, points in detail. So if you want like more tips by her, check out her TikTok. Um, but like, which, like, can you actually make that much money or just like decent money from, other stuff like I like first off what service line do you cover I think it's writer or copywriter and then yeah yeah, what, yeah. um okay sorry can you say that like what what can they make a lot of money in like what services should they offer yeah like what can you do on Fiverr to to make that money um yeah so I mean I've known a ton of people who have made all sorts of money from there doing the most random things that I know nothing about like I know one guy who makes a ton of money doing voiceovers so he just people will send them their ads or their YouTube videos and he'll just do the like you know and one morning like that stuff and he um with those type of things like he only needs one client per day they pay him like two thousand dollars and he's done you know I'm over here working a hundred dollars per order so I'm I'm working at it from a volume perspective but 
I mean, the, again, the biggest categories are illustration, animation, graphic design. Um, if you are proficient in any of those, you can make a ton of money. Um, social media management, social media marketing. If you want to manage social media accounts for people, you'll have tons of people who need help with that. Um, writing and translation, the most lucrative writing gig you could offer, which I don't even offer, is resume writing and editing because I can't stand it. But um, if you help people fine tune their resumes and their cover letters, they'll hand you their money. So it's, you know, that it in every category, you can make a ton of money at it. It's just what you're willing to do. Because <laughs> um, something like, to me, resume writing is super mundane. So of mm. course, those people are making a lot of money because no one else wants to do it. Uh, so yeah, it, you know, it's any category I've heard of people making a ton of money. Right, and what, what do you offer as a gig on there? So I have, I think, 12 gigs open now, which I don't recommend doing at first because you're gonna wanna learn the platform and everything, but um, okay, let's see. I offer, I write blogs, website content, product descriptions, eBooks, app descriptions. I provide editing. I do um, like website audits where I kind of check out their content, give them feedback, help them with keywords. Um, Amazon product descriptions, social media copy. I do a ton of stuff, um, but I work my way up to be able to offer that many things. It's taken a lot of discipline in my work. Um, it's the discipline to wake up at 7 a.m. and get to work at 8 a.m. no matter what, because there's timers on the orders and you have to make it happen. So I always tell people, you know, start out with just three, like do not start out with 12. You'll, um, you might get very overwhelmed. Right. And, you know, one thing I, I'm curious about is kind of why you're so open with all this information, because um, I know some people are do the same and then others will kind of like, keep it secret because they're scared that if they tell the world, then everyone's going to flood in and do the same thing and there'd be less demand. Yeah. That's, um, that's a great and funny question. I, I guess that, like, I could answer that in a lot of ways. Right. Um, I, I just believe in like, I like to help people. I just think that it never hurts you to help someone else. I just don't see how it would ever hurt me if I help three people get on there. Um, and, you know, the internet is a big place. There's 8 billion people in the world. Uh, more and more people are going online right now than ever before. Like, this is a great time to get on there. Because if you think about it, okay, let's say you offer one service that only, you know, 0.01% of internet users want. That's still, your market is still, what is that? You know, like 6 million people that want your service. So I would say, you know, don't be afraid. There's no room for you. Like, there's definitely always room for you. And more and more people are going online every single day. Um, and it's, you know, right now it's crazy. And it's crazy on Fiverr right now. The amount of demand for services is crazy. Yeah, and I would add to that, that you're probably building your personal brand, which could be monetized in the future in a yeah. more scalable way. That, yeah, and that would be nice. Um, it's funny because I'm so busy every day working that I kind of am slacking on the growing my personal revenue, personal brand side of things. So I'm trying to get on top of that in quarantine, um, get a hold of my passive income. So yeah, I would like to at some point convert it. Yeah, I, I do know like current, I checked out your website and you're currently offering one ebook, which I, I'm actually thinking about buying. It's uh, pretty, pretty affordable. Um, so yeah, the, that's something that's uh, interesting to me as well. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh, spending, has your spending gone up as you have made this income? Because I know that happens for a lot of people. Yeah, I um, my spending definitely has gone up, but I'm still, you know, if you ask my mom, like I still save most of it. I mm -hmm. don't consider myself this person who has all this money. I kind of just still see myself the same way. And, um, you know, I go on more trips. I'll order a more expensive glass of wine, but uh, I have not gone out and bought a nice car or anything. Like I, um, I treat myself here and there, but I'm actually saving, investing the majority of it. So I'm not too exciting with my big spending. Is that something that um, you're still kind of working on? Because uh, in a previous podcast I listened to, you you definitely said you were kind of like shopping for financial advisors and you weren't sure what you were going to do with all that savings. Yeah, I um, yeah. so I sorted it out with a local bank. 
and I met with their financial advising team. And um, I don't have a financial advisor because I met with them and I it's just not for me. Um, but I'm working with my local bank and they went ahead and opened up all these nice Vanguard, you know, things for me and whatnot. So I did invest a lot of it in January. So I finally got a hold of myself, um, which is good. <laughs> but yeah, in the meantime, my personal spending is like uh, probably above average, but not, not crazy. Excellent. That's awesome. Vanguard yeah. index funds are like my favorite thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah, um, too. I'm so bad. I don't even know. No, they did a good job. Those guys, they, they were good. Um, so in terms of like, okay, I think people are going to ask about work-life balance and, you know, your ability. Um, it seems pretty nice. Like when we scheduled this interview, you mentioned that uh, you took weekends off, which was surprising because I think people assume, oh, well, she must be working 90 hour weeks. Um, yeah. But then you also get the ability to travel the world too, because since it's remote. So tell me about that. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, work life balance behind the scenes. Um, I try to block my weekends off because if I didn't, I would have 14 hour days each day. But in all honesty, you know, I do still work three to four hours Saturday and Sunday. So there is still, I can't lie and say, oh, I take days off. You actually can't ever take a day off of Fiverr because you have to log in and make sure you're responding to your customers. And if someone asks you a question about their gig the night before and you don't answer them for two days, they could request to cancel it because you're not being attentive to their needs. So um, I would say I've estimated it. I work about, I, it's like a 50 hour work week. Um, it's not 80, but it's not 40. It's always what I say. And I wake up early to give myself time in the evenings. Like I'm able to chat with you right now because I started working at seven this morning. So I try to play the sun a little bit and uh, to be able to travel and do things. If I know I'm going to go on a trip on Friday and I want to be able to see something at noon, you know, I might wake up at six to get some work done. And I always make sure I have, you know, a hotspot, that type of thing. So uh, I would say I come in around the 50 hour mark, uh, which I'm, I'm okay with. I'm not like, I don't feel like I'm going to explode from how much work I'm doing, but it's definitely a lot more than a nine to five. Yeah, that's interesting. I think it's, it's important that like, to note that everything's not like roses and sunshine all the time. Like yeah. you do have to put in the work and yeah. this definitely comes with certain, I don't know if there's sacrifices is the right word, but like you have to stay attentive to your clients. You can't just you know, take off for a month like you would for a yeah. nine to five work job. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, there's, there's no, you never unplug. And I know for some people that sounds terrible. And I always say, you know, then that, then working for yourself might not be the answer to me. What is terrible is being told what time I have to sit at a desk. So I'd much rather take on the, like the stress every day of having to answer people than sit at a desk. So it's kind of like, you know, which would you rather in your head? And just to clarify, that's your there is a vacation mode on Fiverr, but because you're a Fiverr pro, you can't turn that off. Is that correct? I, I could. I'm just such a crazily competitive, hardworking person that I mm -hmm. never I turn it off because I have this I every entrepreneur I read about this like has this. I have right. this feeling of if I just slack off for two weeks, the next closest person on my heels will go past me. That kind of weird you know, if I stop, other people are still moving feeling, um, which I think every entrepreneur struggles with and is something they have to learn to manage. So I am i don't know if I've learned to manage it yet, but yeah, I could turn the gigs off. I don't. And that is probably one of the reasons why I have like the highest ranking writing orders, uh, writing gigs in my categories, because in five years, I've never turned on the vacation mode. Um, wow. which I, it's something I can hear Gary Vee again saying, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've heard mixed things about that. Like I, a lot of YouTubers mention that because they're scared like the algorithm will change. But Yeah, that's what I'm scared of too on Fiverr. But I mean, uh, Shaytards took a one-year break. And then when he came back with his family, he came back even stronger. So yeah, who, who really knows? I mean, yeah, it just no, depends, I guess. It's true. It's a mindset thing. Hmm. Um, in terms of... Um, your next goals like i'm sure you have other plans you're not completely content what are you what is your like next step forward like um like after fiverr or just like in the next few years 
um, in the next few years? Like, do you want to continue doing what you do now or are you trying to do something different? Yeah, I would say, to people, you know, of course, there's a bunch of other things I'd love to do, but until they make me 350K per year, it's kind of hard to walk away from this. So mm -hmm. uh, quarantine has actually kind of been amazing in some weird ways. I've actually been able to explore some other options that I've been thinking about, like online courses, um, making a YouTube channel, setting up the website you saw is a crappy website, but I'm having like a really nice one made right now that I uh, paid for. So um, I'm trying to definitely invest really hard into my personal brand because I would love to pivot in the next few years into speaking engagements, you know, publishing books, consulting, what everyone wants to do. Um, I don't want to write eBooks, you know, feverishly every single day the rest of my life. So I would like to make that kind of natural pivot in the future and um, figure out something where I still have a team of writers though, because I don't think I would want to get rid of these clients that I have. I don't want to just like throw them away. So all the classic pivoting things people want to do. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I do see a lot of people in that industry pivoting to courses and uh, eBooks once the time yeah. is right. It's just, yeah it seems a lot more scalable because you don't have to right. talk to each client and do the work. You can just exactly. offer a PDF. Yeah. And I always say like, I'm 27 now and I started doing this when I was 21. So I always told myself like by 30, three years from now, I would like to have transitioned into less of an intense typing position would be nice. Okay. So we're going to go back to Fiverr because I, I feel like my listeners are probably like, okay, but we want more tips on Okay. On how to how to make that money. So so what else would you like to say about kind of starting out your first year in Fiverr? Um, I would say to people, don't be discouraged if it is slow at first. That's when a lot of people give up, and you definitely do not give up. Uh, if you find not enough people are messaging you or inquiring about your services, I always say there's no harm in leveraging your own personal resources, meaning. Uh, messaging your mom, messaging your sister, whatever, and saying, hey, you know, can I make you a logo? And can you book me on Fiverr to do it? Uh, for five bucks, I will. And then you can give me a review and that kind of thing to really kind of kickstart it. Um, there's no harm in doing that. There's the buyer request portal you can go on. It's right at the top. And you can see all the jobs people have posted that they want you to do for them. So that can help you kind of wait for people to come to you. Uh, and another thing is, you know, advertising yourself on your own social media i always say to people i think the time has come where we can't really uh pretend like social media isn't important anymore and i know you know a lot of people are like oh i hate it i don't like it and i'm like that's fine but it's still the best marketing tool in the world so if you want to sell and make money online you have to have some kind of digital presence i'm just especially now so if you don't have an instagram make one um you know work on it a little bit and then you can advertise your gigs to people there and these are all great ways to kind of get your gig started on Fiverr. And then once you get one review, two reviews, three reviews, you know, shoppers will start to see that and go, okay, you know, three people booked his, her, her gig uh, and they liked it. They gave them a five star review. So maybe I'll try it too. And then once you hit that point in it, it kind of will take off on its own. But to get to that point, those are like three things I always tell people they can do to get started and to be patient and do not give up. Right. And buyer requests, uh, based on one of your TikToks, seems to be like a very important thing. That's basically like submitting a proposal to clients before they come to you, right? So is that something you do a lot of or you recommend people doing a lot of? Yeah, I did it a lot when I was starting out. I don't do it anymore because they tend to be low paying jobs, like 5 to $25. But years and years ago, that was great to me. I was never above them doing that. Um, what it is, it's like a forum where people will post. So if Fiverr has recognized you as a writer, they will um, post these jobs they need done. So it might say like, you know, I need four blogs, $10 each done by 9 p.m. You know, who's available? And then you click it and you write to them and say, hi, I'm available. I'm okay with that price. And you can apply to like all these little jobs and you'll eventually get these people who will book you. Um, the only thing is people have told me, Buyer requests are not active in the quieter categories. So if you're offering something like craft lessons or whatever, that's not that busy on there, there might not be buyer requests available for you. But if you're in the big categories, again, social media management, that type of thing, there will be buyer requests all day long that you can apply to. So I would say to people, if you're sad that there's no buyer requests for what you're offering, it might be a sign to kind of develop your skills in something that is a little more sought out, which is graphic design, being able to edit, 
being able to manage social media accounts and that kind of thing. Got it, got it. And one thing I want to kind of uh, mention is that I think it's important to kind of at least partially follow your passion because I feel like a lot of people might just be like, oh, well, the money's in exactly X, yeah. Y, and Z. So I just got to go there. And if you completely hate it, you're not going to stick with it. You're going to burn out. I mean, you, you put in a decent amount of hours every day. Would you agree yeah. with that? Oh, hundred percent. I do all these passion videos on TikTok, And I always say to people, you know, you can't just wake up and go, well, I guess I'll make a lot of money making logos. So that's what I'll sell. Like, no, no, no. You definitely have to start with a basis on what you're passionate about, whether it's cooking, fitness, writing, whatever it is, you definitely do need to take what you like to do and do something with it. And, you know, Fiverr isn't for everyone. If it's, if you want to sell handmade necklaces, then Etsy is for you. Whatever your passion is, there definitely is an online marketplace for it. And it's okay if it's not on Fiverr because there's, there is going to be somewhere that will welcome you. And yeah, definitely don't just chase the dollar because you, it's going to be hard at times and you need, you're going to need to like what you're doing to kind of make it through it. Plus making 60 K a year, doing something you like is sometimes better than doing making 150 K hating something. Yeah. And you can do it anywhere you want now. You, you know, you can be in your pajamas, no boss. I mean, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in terms of like, um, Fiverr and its place versus like Upwork or other platforms. I found this very surprising because, you know, usually it seemed like it seems it seems like Upwork seems to be like the higher tier or higher priced option, and yet you're making so much more money from Fiverr. Do you think that's because Fiverr made a new move recently with its pro pro program, or um, has I it think always it been this way? It, it, there's one major difference between Fiverr and Upwork. And I tried Upwork in the beginning too. I tried all these sites and that is on Fiverr. It's not about applying and wooing buyers. It's more, Fiverr is more about quick. Um, you know, we're not going to charge you as much as they do on Upwork. It might not be the best quality, but you're going to get what you need and you're going to get it fast. And mm -hmm. people like that today. And that has been what has differentiated Fiverr from Upwork for me. On Upwork, you go on there and there's people posting all these, these jobs they need and they make you apply for them. So I had one person, they're like, oh yeah, you can write my blog, but I want to sample one first. And they're like, here's the prompt. And so I and it was writing for free for people on Upwork and then they weren't even picking me. So I was like, all right, this is a huge bust. Um, and again, like I don't, it might work for other people. So I'm not saying that there isn't money to be made there. There is. But on Fiverr, I loved this idea that people were just instantly booking me without making me prove myself to them over and over again. And it was that kind of volume that has been why I scaled on Fiverr, because I don't need to prove myself to people. They just buy me. And um, I don't know, call me impatient or a classic millennial or whatever. But I like that a lot more than spending three days trying to convince someone that they should work with me. Yeah, that's interesting. I know there's a lot of freelance writers out there. So hopefully they, they'll find some value in this, uh, uh, this episode. Um, in terms of people you follow, you mentioned Gary Vaynerchuk. Is there anyone else that you kind of like really like to follow in travel, mm -hmm. photography, freelancing, entrepreneurship? Yeah, I, um, I follow a bunch of people. They're like all over the place. Um, there's one girl, I love her TikTok, Maddie Dewey, her name is, and she does all the algorithm TikTok. She explains it in all of her videos and it's amazing. Uh, on Instagram, you know, I love travel. So I follow a lot of the big travel influencer girls like Liz and Tara Milk and all of them. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. I've been starting to collaborate with some other people in my space. There's one girl, Krista Bella. She goes by Krista Bella Travels. She's a pro digital nomad. Like she knows everything about how to go country to country with your laptop. And I more so am on the make money online side of things. So we've been talking to combine our brands a little bit in some YouTubes and whatnot, which will be fun. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm always connecting with people. Those are some to name um gary v is definitely my favorite you know right to cut right to the chase entrepreneur <laughs> kind of guy but I, I follow a lot of entrepreneurial guys on tiktok i just can't think of their names right now but i think tiktok's going to give rise to more gary v's in the world got it and in terms of like travel like where what countries have you been to that your your lifestyle is enabled 
Um, well, the biggest was when I lived in Japan for a full month last year. Uh, that was the longest I lived in a foreign country kind of working remotely. So I bounced around Japan with my laptop because they have seamless uh, internet and everything. It was very easy to do there. Uh, all you do is pick up a little internet hotspot right at the airport. No questions asked. Best internet ever. Um, Iceland was great with internet. Ireland and pretty much most countries have their internet situation together. And then as long as you have internet, there's no reason why you can't work. That's really all you need. Um, so yeah, I've been, I don't know, I've worked out of Ireland, Iceland, North Ireland, the Netherlands, Germany, Japan. Uh, I have a funny collection of places I've been. I haven't been to any of the classic, like I haven't been to Italy yet or whatever, but I've been to Iceland. And or stuff. Thailand. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been to Thailand, but I've been to Japan. So um, I'd love to travel more. I had a lot of travel plans that got canceled because of this. So I am definitely cannot wait until I can travel again. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great that you've been here all over the place yeah and yeah south korea i heard also has lightning fast internet because of all the esports gamers there it's like yeah. super ultra fast yeah. um let's see here so in terms of time management procrastination that sort of stuff can you give some tips on this because a lot of our listeners struggle with procrastination and i think you can't do that when you have someone on Fiverr looking to book you. Yeah, there, there's, I always say to people, there's no such thing as procrastination in the world of freelancing. It just can't happen because uh, you will get stuck. So every single day I have like 10 people place orders. So if I just don't do my work one day, that doesn't mean those 10 orders went away. It means the next day I now have 20 orders to do in one day. So I think it's kind of born out of necessity when you've had one really scarring day as a freelancer where you had to work for like 24 hours straight and you wanted to start crying. It like took me one of those situations to kind of get it together. And, you know, you kind of get it together because you have to um, when you start having a lot of people book you. So I know for me, like my discipline just came from like it had to come or I was going to sink because I had all these people messaging me and I didn't want to like lose all this business. So uh, I, I say, you know, there's that, there's the obvious, I mean, get social media apps off of your phone. If you have a problem with it, put your phone down. Um, I'm a big believer in waking up early. I'm also a big believer in working out. And I, I believe exercise definitely gives your brain a new, uh, flush of ideas and energy and everything. Um, one trick that I think is more helpful than people realize is when you work from home all day, there's the urge to go nap. Um, I love napping, so I have to resist it. And I find that I don't allow myself to get like stuffed from food at any point during the day because that's when I get sleepy. So from like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., I eat very light. I still eat that. Like I'm not like starving or anything. But I'll have like oatmeal and like strawberries and banana and peanut butter and that kind of thing all day. And I'll keep it light so I never have that like big carb like, oh, I'm going to take a nap. And I really think that's like an understated tip <laughs> um, to avoid stuffing yourself with sleepy food. And, you know, at dinner at 7 p.m., if you want to eat a big bowl of mac and cheese, go for it. If your work's done, have fun. But if your work isn't done, I would say, like, resist the big carb loading. I know because for me, it was making me want to sleep. Interesting. Yeah. In terms of, like, other virtual work from home um, tips, what do you think like are your biggest stumbling blocks or things that you wish you knew before you started? Um, I know that's a good one. So I have a tendency because I have so much work to do every day where I just don't leave my apartment. Obviously right now is a different situation, but I got myself, you know, coworking memberships or Starbucks. I could leave, but then I just wouldn't leave because I was like, well, that'll take me 10 minutes to get there and I should just get to work. And I always hit that point every so often when I'm working just in my apartment every day for a month. It definitely isn't great for you mentally. Like you do need to mix up your setting. You just do. So I would say to people, try and resist the urge and just walk the 10 minutes to go mix up your environment. Um, I think it gives you like a newfound motivation each day and it pumps you up a little more and I could be better about it. And I always feel like once I force myself to move, I can feel myself get happier. So I'd say to people like resist the hermit urge, even if you're like so busy, uh, like try and move around and change up your settings because it definitely makes you happier. In terms of like travel and working, 
would you say it's unwise to like because i know i see certain travel influencers like visit a new place every day like i feel like that just be too much turmoil to really settle down and like have us make sure you have a solid internet connection and everything to work in peace is there like a limit to that yeah i, I feel like that's just a personal preference thing um i love traveling and making itineraries like obsessively i like having all these excel sheets that i update like a weirdo so i like to move around every day but um it's definitely taxing and if you don't love travel like that if you don't love planning then no i would not i would not move every day because uh, it of course adds a lot of stress to it. I have found still though, uh, Starbucks and McDonald's always have really reliable Wi-Fi. So I would say to people, you know, worst case scenario, as long as you can find a Starbucks, you'll live. And um, and it's more, you know, relevant in the United traveling around the United States than the world. But I don't know, Starbucks is pretty big around the world. So I would say, like, you know, get download the Starbucks app and just follow their stores, and you'll be okay. Got it. So in terms of like scaling your uh, Fiverr, um, do you have any last tips for anyone who kind of wants to ramp up? I know you said 10K in your first year, but what if yeah. they're like, okay, I want to, I want to do what Alex does in three years. I want to, I want to make that money. Sure. Uh, it's just little things that might sound obvious, but you might not realize, which is um, having high resolution, crisp imagery of your face all over your profile, because you have to understand that these people have been scammed before online. So they're a little distrusting. So you want to make sure that your face is all over your profile. It's your profile picture. It's on your gigs. It's, it's a high quality image. Like no one wants to look at webcam pictures anymore. Uh, make sure people can clearly tell you are who you say you are so they can trust you. That's a huge starting point. Um, not being afraid, you know, fill out your whole profile with every last piece of information. There's just no need to skip over it. Uh, spend one hour and you'll be done. Um, gigs, you can have a gig video in them. I don't because that's kind of irrelevant for writing, but if you do literally anything else, logo design, you make websites, anything, you have to have that video in your gig because that is just will make or break if people buy from you. And it can be a screen share, it could be, um, a screen recording even of you making a website like it doesn't have to be crazy but you definitely want to make sure you have a video because again you just have to like put yourself in the buyer's shoes and think about if i'm going to book someone i want to see that they are who they say they are they went they took the time to make their profile look nice that's like a bad sign if someone can't even do that and they took the time to make this video for me you know okay i like what i'm seeing now so it's really just going above and beyond on these simple things on your profile and not rushing it. If it takes you three days, it takes you three days, but uh, just put yourself in the buyer's shoes and it becomes kind of common sense. Awesome. So in terms of uh, future content and future stuff, um, where do you see yourself in five to 10 years from now? Oh, well, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, let's say five years from now, I hope I own some type of thing, my own brand, a la Gary V, where I'm helping young people learn how to freelance, learn how to start businesses, make money online, be financially independent. That would be amazing. Uh, in three years, I really hope I'm on Forbes 30, under 30. I got <laughs> more money. That's a, that's a short-term goal. 10 years from now, I would love it if I am, I don't know, a best-selling author and I have plans to one day run for office, but I will not disclose on behalf of what party. So um, hopefully 10 years from now, I'm maybe pivoting more to the political side of things, but I don't want to do that for at least 10 years. So I want to be apolitical until then. No one's going to get anything out of me. Yeah, fair enough. That's <laughs> an interesting pivot. I'm excited yeah. to see where it goes. Yeah. And so I, I also feel like you're not um, concerned if the the income from Fiverr drops, like you'd still be happy and you'd still be able to figure something out. Like, is that the case? And do you think, you know, what you're doing now is going to continue or grow or drop? I mean, it's funny because coronavirus, you know, it's brought so much terribleness with it. Yet at the same time, it has been such a boost for the online world. And it like feels weird to say that. But I mean, I think we're, we are only going to see more and more people working from home through the internet now more than ever before. So I do not think they are going anywhere. I'm watching them. They're opening all these new services every day. I've never seen this pace before from them. They're kind of welcoming in all these new internet buyers like with open arms. So they're being smart. 
I'm not worried about my income dropping with them, but I guess if it ever did, I feel like this journey I've had on there, it's not about the money. It's about like the discipline, the skills. I've learned how to sell to people. I've learned how to make customers happy. I've learned how to manage my time. All these, you know, priceless things. I feel so confident in them now that I, I feel like if Fiverr just ceased to exist, I know I could do it again. So I always say to people, you know, don't always be chasing the dollar with it because you'll you'll discover after two years that you you know en enriched yourself so much more than what's in your bank account by like forcing yourself on this journey. I just that just sounded like very zen of me, but <laughs> it made a lot of sense. I, I think you developed some fantastic skills that a lot of people need: selling, For sure. pleasing your customers, all that stuff, discipline. <laughs> yeah. So. Do you have any uh, plugs you want to mention? Your social media or website? Yeah, I mean, I I um, I love Instagram and TikTok. I mean, I love TikTok the most. So it's just my name on all these sites on TikTok. I'm Alex Fasulo Biz on Instagram. I'm Alexandra Fasulo. That's where I share my photography. I just launched an app that I'm really excited about. It's kind of like this photo trending map tool called iPop. So if anyone wants to go download that, it's in the app store and um, you can find it on TikTok and Instagram as well. iPop app, like I, your eyeball, E-Y-E pop app. And um, yeah, that's it. I don't know. I have some eBooks on Amazon. If you search my name, time management stuff. And uh, if you want to find me on Fiverr, it, my username's Fuzzwaldo. F A S Waldo, and um, don't feel like you need to come by for me. You can just check it out too to help you set up your profile. Awesome! Thanks to everyone for listening. Thanks, Alex, for coming on board, and make sure to subscribe and leave a review. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks. <laughs>